Hello, this is our video presentation for Project 3 of AI Planning for Autonomy. Our team name is Infinite Monkeys, and the team members are Gonzalo, Garrison, and Max. For the Pac-Man AI competition project, we investigated five distinct approaches, and we will explain each of them in this presentation. Our first approach is the A-star. We use the maximum maze distance as the heuristic for our agent to reach his goal destination. If the agent is the Pac-Man, the goal would be the closest food and shortest path back to base if it is being chased. If the agent is a ghost, it will chase the invader when it is detectable. We implemented this approach mainly to understand the Pac-Man code structure. We know it is not optimal and cannot generalize very well in the competition. However, it served as a guide to implement more sophisticated algorithms. As we can see, even though it tries to avoid some positions, it is not smart enough to escape from enemies. It repeats the process to find the closest enemy food every time it responds. Our second approach is the Monte Carlo tree search. We implemented this online search method to have five rollouts in total, with nodes selected via our upper confidence bound. Features that we considered include distance to food, distance to capsule, number of food dots, distance to enemies, and minimum distance to go back to base. The agent with this approach could look ahead a couple of moves to select the best action. However, its ability is capped due to the assumption that the rest of the world is stationary. As we can see, based on the features that we selected, our Pac-Man is relatively conservative and sometimes goes back and forth in the middle of the map. However, in many of the games it is quite effective at capturing and bringing back food. Also, we see that the agent is sometimes oblivious to the surrounding topology and may therefore enter dangerous dead ends, because the calculations do not reveal the fact that it can be trapped by the enemy. Our third approach is the approximate key learning. We trained our agents against the baseline team across several random layouts. We used features such as ghosts that are near, closest food, food already eaten, and minimum distance to return to base. Additionally, we utilized reward shaping to encourage our agent to eat food and get back home safely. We use this approach during much of the preliminary competition due to its relatively stable performance. This approach performed very well and we were able to obtain feature weights with no direct human input. However, the training time for this algorithm is very time consuming, typically several hours long. Additionally, we need to train it in different layouts and with an effective reward function and reward shaping technique in order to make it very competitive. As you can see, our Pac-Man attacker is overly conservative. It goes after food only if it is safe to, to eat it. Otherwise, it tries to look for an alternative path. Also, we found that our agents sometimes get stuck in loops. Our fourth approach is the game theoretic minimax tree. We implemented it together with Monte Carlo tree search to handle cases where the exact location of the enemy is not available. We implemented the depth limited minimax algorithm to a depth of three to find the best action in each game state. Lastly, we used the same features as we used for the Monte Carlo tree search. We think this approach generalizes well in the competition and against the baseline team when testing. Taking into account the actions of the enemy make it our most effective approach. When examining the result of agent behavior, we see that as soon as the defender observes the enemy, it goes to eat the invader enemy. And also, the offensive agent attempts to evade a chasing enemy until it is safe to resume eating, eating enemy food. Our last approach is the rule-based one. We realize that we can have both agents follow the same context-sensitive behavior rule set and effectively act as both attacker and defender, depending on circumstances. Additionally, we attempted to take more agents to make agents more sensitive to their surroundings by utilizing the initial game setup time to examine the grid topology and locate potentially dangerous areas that should be avoided in certain contexts. As a result, the agent actions are more interpretable and predictable. However, we needed to take into account every possible scenario from different layouts. We can see that both agents start as offensive and start to eat enemy food while avoiding the colored positions in the simulation. If they, feel th if they feel threatened, they attempt to reach home base or capsule while avoiding dangerous grid locations. When it, when it is safe for the agent to come back, it returns and delivers the dots. For each of our methods, we gauge this performance against the provided baseline team across 10 different layouts, with the layouts being kept constant across each of the examined methods. We noticed that the Minimax approach outperformed the other techniques by winning all 10 games and returning the highest average score per game. Due to its versatility and stability, we utilize the approximate key learning approach during most of the preliminary competition. However, due to the performance of the Minimax, as shown in the previous slide, we decided to use it for the final competition. For future work, we could try to implement deep key learning and combine game theory with reinforcement learning. Furthermore, we could design features that are more specific to each approach or implement feature engineering in order to obtain a set of the most effective features. Additionally, sensitivity to game grid topology should be implemented for all of our methods. Finally, Bayesian inference would also be used to make a better estimation of the enemy's position.